5G will likely accelerate the telco transformation process, but it also has the potential to disrupt business and revenue models. Cecilia, when we talk about 5G, we focus a lot on the industrial, vertical industry use cases, but what about the consumer market? Will 5G actually make much of a difference to the consumer market? So, in fact, just looking at the consumer market, we predict 1 billion subscribers by 2023. And the reason for that is also that we believe that 5G will actually have to start with the consumers just because of the capacity that is needed in the networks to cater for consumer expectations in the networks today. And in terms of consumer expectations, are you talking about coverage? Are you talking about um, pure speed increases? So when you ask consumers what they want, they most often relate to what they know of today. So you would have a lot of answers that has to do with more speed to take care of, especially the video traffic that we see in the network today. And from a pure traffic perspective, it's, we're talking about an eight times increase in traffic from 2017 to 2023. And from a consumer perspective, that is very much related back into their expectations of enhanced video experience with augmented reality and virtual reality. And today, many consumers are not satisfied with the performance that they see in the networks and hence have high expectations that 5G really could become even close to what they perceive of the Wi-Fi experience. So maybe as an industry, we have an opportunity here to really show how 5G can, can be that experience that's possible for you to do all the things that you want on your devices, resting assured on 5G alone, not having to rely back on remembering or finding Wi-Fi passwords. But for this to happen, it requires the entire ecosystem to, to, to step up. Um, you need the networks in place, you need the core, you need the RAN, you need the devices. The consumer has to get their hands on capable devices. When does Ericsson see all this actually start happening in decent quantities? Okay, so first of all, if we look back to what our customers are saying, they are talking about the early deployments of 5G happening already this year in 2018. Then we mainly see cases which are around fixed wireless access with pocket routers and so on, because the first smartphones for 5G would start to appear in 2019. And when the third generation of ships that start appearing beyond 2020, this is when we really see the big takeoff in 5G. So when we talk about the 20% of, of all traffic being on 5G in 2023, it's actually in itself one and a half times the, times the total traffic in the networks today. But with that increase of eight times from 2017 to 2023. So all of that to happen, you're very right. The devices need to be there, but also obviously the spectrum needs to be available for, the, for our customers to start, start deploying their networks. So we're talking about um, true mobility, the, 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 the personal device, whatever that is, smartphone or, or device of the future, but we're also talking yeah. about going into consumer premises. We're also talking about that sort of last mile, maybe fixed wireless access, copper replacement. Yeah, we do. So we see that uh, happening a lot, which is actually not even in our forecast of the 1 billion subscribers for 2023, because the fixed wireless access opportunities is one of those kinds where we see very different predictions in the market actually playing out. But it's for sure is there, and we see a lot of operators talking about it primarily in North America. But there is also the, the drive from consumers. So interestingly enough, when we ask consumers what they hope for with 5G, they talk about that they are looking for iconic moments, that they are looking for a new iPhone moment, so that there is an anticipation out there among consumers that they would really see new things happening also on the device front. Do consumers say, and it's probably to be expected, we're not prepared to pay any more for this? I can't imagine consumers want to pay more for a 5G service, or do they? On a direct question, actually over 40% see that they could pay more, but they are also looking to pay in other ways. So for specific services, there is a willingness to pay for the, for the, the more broadband aspect together with the service itself. What about, we started talking about um, consumer market, but we put it in context of the overall 5G market, and a large slice of the 5G market will probably be the vertical industries. Um, 
What has Ericsson done to um, help identify and, and look at the shape of, of this market opportunity for telcos? So what we have done when it comes to industrial opportunities is that we have identified the 10 industries where we see the biggest potential for disruption and for digital transformation from the perspective of mobile operators, but also beyond for the bigger group of ICT players. And among those 10 industries, the one where we see the biggest potential for business, for operator perspective, would be uh, in areas around manufacturing and energy utilities, and if you combine automotive segment across public transport and, and automotive. What about an area that maybe straddles industry and consumer, um, yeah. uh, like broadcasting and media? Um, yeah. We have been working for a number of years with, with LTE to try and exploit the capabilities of LTE in the, in the broadcast sector. It hasn't yeah. quite taken off as maybe it wanted to, but yeah. is, is the broadcast um, area uh, one that potentially could produce revenues for, for telcos? Yes, yeah, so media is one of the industries that we have looked at, but it's not popping up among the top five, but it is there among the 10. And it is a lot of opportunity. It is one of those areas which has been discussed and exploited a lot, but it hasn't really uh, been the big. There are bigger opportunities in some of the other areas. Final question then, what can we expect to, to see and hear from Ericsson in, in the year ahead in terms of 5G and the push towards uh, consumer adoption? So what we will do is to work very closely with our uh, customers to identify their opportunities to start launching 5G networks for consumers. And our advice will, will be based on the available spectrum of that specific operator and what business opportunities they're after. And when it comes to consumers specifically, our advice will also be to really play it to what they can really keep their promise. So when you launch 5G to consumers, be specific on what are the services you're actually offering and ensure to stay true to your promise and work with us to make that happen. Because what we see today in our research is that a lot of consumers out there are believing that operators are playing marketing games for them and not really always living up to their promises. So I think as an industry, we have to identify what we can really do and make that happen and stay true to our promise together. Celia, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.